Weaving in the garden with lavender. Now this is going to be fun. I like to make these lavender wands when the flowers are still immature. I get the advantage of the essential oils without all the sneezing from my pollen allergy. Today, I want about 26 of the longest lavender stems and some narrow ribbon. Most instructions call for three yards of quarter inch ribbon. But I regret this, as I pre-cut a bunch of lengths of ribbon, and it turns out I use less than two yards per wand. Say Lagar, that's the railway station. After stripping off the leaves, I squish the stems just below the flowers. I want to bend this almost 180 degrees, and somehow bruising the stems makes this less likely to snap. I used to know the science behind this, but the connection between what to do and why has eroded after time in my brain. With a slip knot, I tie the ribbon to just below the lavender blooms, and I bend the stems back around the flowers. Yeah, this part gets messy. Some of the flowers do still break, but I cunningly added some extras to the bunch. Now for the weaving. It's a simple, plain weave where the ribbon acts, I want to call it the weft, but maybe there's a proper basketry term for this. Oh well, not knowing the jargon isn't stopping me from making the thing. The ribbon passes over and under the stems, weaving a basket that embraces the flowers. As a child, I learned this using one stem per spoke, but these days I use two or three stems, depending on the ribbon, as I like the spoke to be similar in width to the ribbon. Now that all the flowers are hidden, I tie it off temporarily and put it in the shade to dry. It will shrink a bit and I'll adjust the ribbon before either giving it away or hanging it in my closet. The theory is this wand will keep away the dreaded mothra and other bugs that munch on wool by hiding the scent. Not sure this works, but it is pretty and I like the smell. <laughs> 